welcome to my video about the Walksnarl system. I recently converted from DJI V1 and uh, here's my first impressions, experience and some of the things I've done since getting it. Comes packaged really nicely, comes in a nice hard shell. Shell, Walksnarl, see what I did there. Everything just feels really good. The The build quality is really good, the, the plastics are nice, the materials are nice, the fit's nice. It's just a really good solid system. Comes with two patch antennas and two omni antennas. I'll change those over a bit later. My first impressions of the goggles were really good. They they feel exactly how you'd want them to. Um, small, uh, lightweight, but at the same time they feel really nice and sturdy. They don't feel like they're gonna break on you. The buttons are nice and solid and everything just looks really good. Comparing the avatars to the DJI V ones, I feel that the avatars are much better for me in every way. The smaller, better, better fit and the, they're just so much lighter. The only difference really is the screen. The screen on the V1s is much bigger, but the screen on the avatars is the OLED. The OLED is much crisper, sharper, nicer. It's just that it's a little bit smaller. I really love the difference in the weight. It's 83 grams lighter, and when you're wearing them for half an hour, 45 minutes at a time, it makes a big difference. So I don't stick with the original antennas for long. I do upgrade those to the true RC uh, patches and omnis. I don't think there's anything wrong with the ones that it comes bundled with, but uh, going from the iFlight crystals, I just wanted to go for get, get the best ones I could. The um, the lenses are adjustable in the IPD and also with the focus. You do those on the bottom. I also picked up three Pro VTXs and cameras. Again, unboxing these, everything was really good. Felt very comparable to unboxing a Vista. Very familiar, both the antennas, the, the cables, everything just sort of felt familiar. The VTXs seem really good, really good build quality, um, nice easy mounting options, and uh, narrower than I thought, they were, smaller than I thought it was gonna be. Um, sticks out a little bit on my frame. I have quite a skinny frame. I've got the Source One V5. I might have to make some main changes, um, but that's not a problem. The micro SD is a bit of a faff to get out, but I learned something ages ago that if you put a tiny bit of sellotape on either side and then trim it down, it makes it much easier once it's ejected to just pinch it and pull it out. When I first got the goggles, uh, upgrading them was nice and easy. Uh, there's no activation like you have to do with uh, DJI, so that was brilliant. Um, you just put the firmware onto the SD card and boot it up. After upgrading the goggles, I did the exact same thing to my VTXs. Nice and easy, same same thing, just make sure and keep them nice and cool. Um, doesn't take long, no activation, just, yeah, loved it. Uh, no. Binding's super easy, just press the buttons and that's it. I'm one of those weird people that has to fiddle with everything, so on day one of getting my goggles, Decided to take them apart. Snapping off the faceplate was nice and scary. It makes a good cracking noise. Take out a couple of screws, at which point you can then take off the um, the metal straps. I then took a Dremel and just cut a tiny little hole inside of it. I could then slide on my original Fat Shark headband. I could have bought the newer strap, but I'm cheap. I then decided to use the original DJI V1 foam. It was actually really comfortable. The aftermarket DJI foam wasn't as comfortable as the original. So I'm going to try a, a penetration range test on both of these. They're identical, uh, but one's walks now and one's a Vista. Um, got crystals and true RC patches, so it should be the same with the goggles. Both running at 700 milliwatts. Um, let's give it a try. <laughs> <laughs> So this is a spot that I know very well. I know there's certain dead spots, there's certain dark points, and friends. And um, yeah, this corner is where there's the worst signal. Uh, D this is a uh, goggle DVR from, from both of them. GoPro 5 is holding on really well. The, uh, the Vista, uh, but the Nebula Pro is just black at that point. Okay, and this is the walk on test. Straight away you can tell that the dynamic range and the brightness of everything is just way better. A bit massive chunk of this is that you can't really compare the cameras because the Nebula Pro 
is 120 FPS, uh, but dark, whereas the Avatar is 120 FPS, but uh, is more like the Polar. Here you can see it's basically night and day difference. You can see everything. Especially when you come out here, the nebula and the vista, this is just pitch black. So in summary, am I happy? Very much so. Um, I can fly my 5 inch outside pitch black and I can fly my whoops in the house with the same goggles. I can't do that on DJI. I think DJI 3 is still probably better quality, um, but yeah, I love Avatar and um, yeah, strongly recommend it.